Hi guys. So this is a GU81 vacuum tube tester coil I recently put together for a bit of fun. Uh, after seeing the output from this coil, I've decided I might want to keep this and actually build a nice version of this. So I just thought I'd like to share this with you guys. So I think we'll take a look at the schematic first and then we'll take a close look at the coil. Right guys, so this is the schematic. So we have our 240 coming in here. This is on to our Variac. And obviously the Variac is 0 to 270 volts. That feeds onto the uh, primary winding of the microwave oven transformer. And then obviously that gives us a voltage on our secondary. So by adjusting this from 0 to 270, we have a voltage between 0 and about 2200 loaded. Right, so we have the voltage doubler and capacitor. And that's made up of four parallel microwave oven capacitors, one UF each, 2100 volts. And the diodes I used are four microwave oven diodes. These are 12 kV 300 milliamp diodes. And I used four strings of those in parallel. Obviously that's probably not necessary, but it's what I had laying around, so that's what I used. We've got a protection capacitor across there, 10 kV 2.2 nano, to protect these diodes from the RF. Then moving around, that obviously feeds up onto the primary. Now the primary is 40 turns of 1.5 millimeter insulated copper wire. We have a tank cap consisting of five times 470 picofarad 15 kV capacitors. It's actually Soviet capacitors, and I'll show them in a minute when we look at the coil. The secondary is wound on a two and a half inch form, and it's wound in 0 0.3 millimeter enamel copper wire. Now, I'm not sure how many windings are on this secondary, but it's actually wound, it's 16 inches of winding, and the actual form is 17 inches long. So coming off the primary and into the anode of the tube, we have a parasitic oscillation trap, basically a filter, and it's a RL filter. It comprises of a resistor, 4 to 7 ohms, and a few turns of 1.5mm enamel copper wire. And that's just turned around the uh, resistor, I'll have a close look at that, I think there's about 10 turns on there. And it's actually wound over the top of this resistor. That just stops any parasitics oscillating this tube. So moving down to look at the tube more closely, you can see there's three grids there, and we actually have grids one and two tied together, and they're going to be where we're feeding back to. We'll talk about that in a second. Grid three is a suppressor grid, and that's tied directly to ground. So this coil here of 12 turns actually provides the feedback, and that actually switches the tube, switches it on and off. And we're in series with that, we have a lamp and a protection capacitor across this lamp, to stop any RF getting inside this uh, filament. So I'll show you this on the uh, coil when we look at it closely in a minute. But like I say, main, the main constituents of this coil are the primary coil and the feedback coil. And obviously then we've got some uh, uh, tuning stuff like the uh, tank capacitor, etc. So moving on, we have a filament supply for this. This GU81 takes 12.6 volts at around 10 amps. And I'm obviously just using some random transformer that I had kicking around. But a good way to construct this is an old toroid. If you find a toroid, quite a big toroid, you can wind a few windings on there and uh, keep checking the voltage, maybe use a variac or whatever, and you can uh, come up with a quite a nice little filament transformer quite easily. So this comes around and feeds our filaments, which are also the cathode in this tube. And across here we have another capacitor, just again for uh, decoupling and um, shunting off the uh, RF. One other point I'd like to make is usually a good idea to add in here or here some kind of resistor and switch that can be closed after we start this tube it just it's a lot kinder to the tube to start this filament slowly so we'll just start the filament through a resistor on a lower voltage and then close that switch to bring it up to full filament voltage obviously I omitted here but that's a good idea now this schematic is slightly different from what I've actually got here because I've used a random power supply that I have kicking around it's kind of modular build. I mean, I had the secondary for this kicking around already and the power supply. So I put this together in less than half an hour, really. But obviously only because I had the parts kicking around. So like here, I've advised four parallel capacitors or maybe even six. I'm actually using a 40 UF capacitor here, but that's just because I had it on hand. Right, guys, so we've had a quick look at this schematic. Let's have a look at the actual coil now. So, guys, this is a power supply I've used to actually power this this coil and this is a microwave oven transformer as I showed on the schematic this is the big capacitor I'm using like I said you can use four or six parallel microwave oven capacitors 
But this is what I had. Like I say, this is a power supply that kicks around in my workshop and I use it for different things. But it just happened to be perfect for this. Then, after the capacitor, we've got these diodes. Also, I showed on the schematic. These are the uh, microwave oven diodes. And as you can see, there's four strings in parallel there. Probably don't need as many as this, but that's what we've got. So, this is the power supply. Like I say, this produces about 2.2 thousand volts. And it's doubled, halfway doubled, like level shifted. And then we get our output. When this is loaded, we probably end up with about 4.4 kV out of this. Right, and guys, so this is a uh, closer look at the tube board. So this is the GUH1 itself. This is the parasitic trap that I spoke about in the schematic, the uh, 47 ohms with the turns of the 1.5 mil wire across it. It just stops oscillations at other frequencies that were not desirable and obviously uh, drag power from the tube and cause excess heating, etc. This is our feedback lamp, the 150 watt, 240 volts. This is in series with the feedback winding. This is the filament transformer I'm using. But like I said, you can use anything here. As long as it produces enough power to provide 10 amps at 12.6 volts, then uh, yeah, anything. Like I said, a good choice for this is a uh, toroidal, where you can just wind on a few turns and actually make your own transformer. So only one other little interesting thing on this board is this transformer actually puts out too much voltage. It puts out about 13.8 volts, which is obviously too much. So what I did, I actually wound a couple of series inductors. And what this does is drops the voltage down to the right amount that we're looking for. Also adds a little bit of a filter, obviously. So that's that, guys. Let's move around now and take a look at the primary. Right, guys. So this top section here is the primary. There's 40 turns of 1.5 millimeter insulator wire on there. And the tank capacitor goes directly across this. There's no taps. It just goes right across from top to bottom. The bottom set here is the feedback winding. And that consists of 12 turns of the same gauge wire. And that feeds back to the grids. And this is all wound on a piece of 4 inch waste pipe. As you can see guys, there's not actually much clearance in there. But there is enough obviously because it doesn't arc over. And a tighter coupling on a uh, vacuum tube tester coil is obviously uh, desirable. Right guys, this is the tank caps. These are all the uh, 15 kV caps I showed on the uh, tank cap circuit in the uh, schematic. So these are 15 kV, 40 kVar, and they are 470 picofarads each. And obviously we uh, have all these connected at one side, and then we just connect these up as many as we want. So we'll get the uh, coil set up, rough. we know roughly where we want to be anyway, and then we'll just add capacitors until we get to a nice output. Obviously we go too far, we can take them back off. Sometimes you put a few of these in series and just tap along them you know to get the uh, fine tuning obviously a nice way to do this would be a vacuum capacitor or a variable capacitor but this is what we've got and it seems to work pretty well we'll have a close look at the uh, top load of this right guys this is our top load not much to say about this other than it's a uh, aluminium toroid eight and a half inches in diameter and we've got about a two inch uh, wood screw on there just for our breakout point like i say not much we can really say about that okay guys right so we've had a look at this now so uh, we'll move on to the interesting bit and we'll have a look at the output on this. I think you guys will be uh, quite surprised. I've actually built a staccato controller for this and this is the uh, Opto Isolator. It's a DIY photo transistor and uh, infrared LED and a little MOSFET to fire the SCR. The SCR is over there and it's just interrupting the uh, ground to the tube. So we're not actually going to run the interrupter right now. We're just going to run it in CW and then uh, afterwards we'll run it with the interrupter. So we've got the filament powered up now guys. So we'll uh, turn the lights out and we'll have a look at this running. Right, let's wind it up. Right guys, I think we'll have a look at it now running with the uh, staccato controller. So this is the actual staccato, and it is actually a Steve Ward build. It's two 555 timers, and this is mains frequency synchronous. So we actually fire the SCR as the main sine wave starts to climb. Fantastic little controller this. And like I said before, this is isolated at the other end with a uh, homemade opto isolator. So uh, let's take a look at this in action then guys.
All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Now, I will be making a follow-up video to this, where I will actually show this step-by-step -step construction of this coil. But for now, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Take care.